Hey everybody, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. On today's episode, which is episode 10, season 1 of the podcast slash vlog, um, I'm going to be showing you a little insider trip into how I pack. So I'm actually getting ready to leave for a trip that's about 8 hours from where I live currently to go from Indiana to West Virginia. Um, so I'm getting ready to pack all my stuff up and I'm going to kind of show you my method for how I pack things and then I'm going to show you the inside of the Xterra and kind of what my available space is and then I'm going to show you how I utilize it. So um, those are kind of the big three things we're going to cover today. So if you want to learn more, stay tuned. On today's episode, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about uh, how I pack my truck for an overlanding trip. So again, the first thing that I'm going to show you is going to be just sort of my strategy, my uh, equipment that I use to pack. Um, I've mentioned them before in other videos, but I basically use three 68-quart Plano crates to pack my stuff up. The reason that I do that is because it just makes everything a little bit more modular and it also allows me to separate things into categories. So as you'll see in this video in a second, my categories are essentially foodstuffs. So anything dry food, um, anything related to cooking. So my measuring cups, my pots, my pans, my chips, my you know breads, anything like that is gonna go in this container. I even put some fire starting stuff in there because I have to start the stove. It's, it just all kind of works together and makes sense. The second crate is actually um, kind of my dried goods but not food, right? So like things that can get dirty. So like my mudding boots, if you know we hit a muddy spot or somebody gets stuck and I don't want to get my main shoes all filthy and dirty and full of muddy water, I'll throw on these boots that go up to about my knees. So kind of my waders. Um, I also put the chainsaw in there. I put my waterproof jacket. I put some clothes and stuff like that in there. So just all the things that aren't related to food or basically sleeping is the other bin. So then that third bin, um, as I just mentioned, is kind of like sleeping stuff. So pillows, bug spray, anything that falls outside of food or you know outdoor gear um, goes into that bin. So again, you're gonna see more on that here in just a second. So stay tuned for that. It's got measuring cups, some ramen. I generally just kind of throw my food on top because here's the thing, honestly, like it's all getting taken out when I get to the campsite anyways, and I'm gonna have to reorganize it after I start to eat. So I like to bring some snacks, things like that. Pringles are good because they come in a can, so they're kind of protected. Um, these little nut packages are good too. Um, I'm throwing my fire starting stuff in here too um, because I gotta start the grill. Um, I've got this little Yeti. Um, drink holder that keeps your beers cold for you and keeps everything where it should be. Um, these are my microfiber towels. I'm going to do a review of these. I might even shoot some video on this trip and then do a review of those. Um, they're supposed to dry out a lot faster than a traditional towel. So you can just kind of hang them up and then toss them. Um, then in this one back here, in this place back here, I've got you know my clothes, extra shirts, shorts. Um, this is kind of intended to be the dirty stuff, so just sort of you know anything that's not food related or sleep related. Um, so I've got a growler in here in case we stop by a beer brewery. I've got my boots, my long boots, in case we hit some muddy deep stuff. Got my chainsaw, and you'll see that I've wrapped it up with um, plastic wrap. I'm probably gonna put some tape on that just to sort of hold it, but there is chain oil in there. So if we hit some bumpy spots, I just don't want it to come out. Um, so that's in there, but it fits perfectly in this, this Plano crate, and that way I don't have to worry about it spilling because it's always gonna be facing up. So that's pretty handy. Um, over here, I've got my backpack. As you can see, I'm going to probably do a review on this at some point, but I've got my uh, Leatherman in here. I've got my Schrade fixed blade on the top. I've got my tactical pen in case I want to write something or need to, you know, mark something down. 
on the other side, I've got my saw. Um, you know, inside it's actually pretty empty right now. I don't have a ton in here. I'm gonna probably throw some clothes and things like that in there. Um, but so that is that bag. Um, again, it's got molly on it, which is pretty nice. It's got molly all down the side, so you can attach just about anything to it that you want. Oh, down here, I've got a little, I almost didn't see it, it was camouflaged too well, but I've got a little Smitty Built pouch that holds my flashlight, um, which is over here. So my little E300, I'll post a link up below to that, but this is a great little flashlight. Um, so like it puts out a good strong beam, it's pretty adjustable, runs off of just a couple little AA batteries, so that goes right in there. Um, then this chest over here is predominantly um, hard things, so you know I've got lanterns, I've got paper towels, got some ammo for the guns. Um, got pillows. I'm actually bringing two pillows with me just because they're kind of small camping pillows, so I figured why not have both. Um, some BB stuff for the BB gun, an extension cord to run stuff further off the truck. You can see the Luma Noodle down in there. This is my Kelty Noah tarp, which is a great little tarp. This is my little BB gun. Um, I've got some, you know, my fan is down here, so this, the light, which I did a review of not too long ago. And then there's that fan that I'm doing a review on. And so the nice thing is they all just pack pretty well inside of these Plano crates. And then I just really have to worry about three of them. So I just have to take these three crates out. They're stackable. So like here's the lid. Um, these can also sort of double as a table. So sometimes I'll put that upside down like that sort of make like a little table and then you can set, you know, cups or things that you're cooking in there. Um, if you flip it over here to the other side, you can see that it's pretty easy. Just clip down these ends like that and then it's locked. And you can actually, if you wanted to, I can't see it here, but you can lock this lid you could put locks through these ends and you could lock this crate if you needed to, if you wanted it on the outside of your truck or something like that. Um, but so you can kind of see the size of it. So here's my hand on it. This is the 68 quart. I'll put a link to it below and you can see the dimensions there. Um, but so I've got three of these. So I've got that plus those two, plus my backpack. Um, three of these though will fit perfectly across the back of the truck. So that's kind of nice. All right guys, so now that I've shown you kind of how I pack the things into the backpack and the different bins, um, I'm gonna kind of show you a quick walk around of the Xterra itself and the available space, as well as some of the modifications that I've made to it in order to be more efficient, have more functionality, things like that, um, while still allowing for a lot of room for stuff. So that's what we're gonna cover right now, so here we go. All right guys, so as you can see, here's the back of the truck. So I've already sort of pre-packed a little bit. So I've got my 20 liter, five gallon uh, fuel jug up there. It's a little filthy, I need to wipe it off. Um, trash roos down in the middle. We got about an eight hour drive to West Virginia before we're gonna get there. So I don't strap it to the side of the truck until we're in the woods. Just cause it's just extra wear and tear. It's flapping around, it's annoying. I don't need it until we get there anyways. I don't wanna be a poser, so that's inside the truck. And over here you can see the molly panels on the back. Um, that's actually, I'll put a link to it down in the description, but um, it's intended for a JK, a Jeep JK, but it actually fits fairly well on the Xterra and it covers up a hole in my seat. So that's really what I bought it for. Um, the panels on the back are actually full of like fire starting stuff, water filtration stuff. So just things that I might need in a pinch that I wanna grab. And then the red bag down there is actually an old Craftsman bag that I've repurposed as a recovery bag. So it's got all my D-rings, my winch controller, all that stuff are down in there. So then you can see kind of how the Xterra is set up otherwise. So the bottoms of the seats actually come out and then these things go pretty much totally flat, which is pretty handy. And then it still gives me that room in front of the seat. Um, back here you can see I've added these LED lights for a little bit of extra light. Pretty simple, I actually just wired them into the main center one, which has also been replaced with a brighter LED light. But so it's kind of daytime right now, so it's hard to tell, but at night, this whole back end is lit up. And when I'm in the truck, like a couple of times that I've slept in it, I've actually 
it's nice because you can just flip the switch to on on the light and then it'll turn on all these lights inside so you know if you're reading a book or just hanging out camping inside of the truck you can do that um i've talked about this previously and there's a uh a walkthrough on my website but over here i've got the vire 88p compressor um this one i'm kind of proud of so it's it's just mounted using a quick strap back there that sort of holds it up to the side I've got the 16 foot extension here so you can see I installed this little hook and then I just kind of keep them strapped up here so they don't fall down. I've um, got some extra bungee cords back there but so that'll actually reach all of the wheels and tires of the truck without even having to take the compressor out. But then check this out. So what I did was I actually cut, actually cut the OEM wires from it and then I wired it to this universal fitting which you can see that I also wired a universal marine uh, plug there. So the reason for this to make this make sense is It's not on all the time. So when you plug this in it just comes on there is no on off switch on the wire Well, there's an on off for the compressor, but the the thing itself turns on a light and it comes on right away So this just allows me to be able to plug it in and unplug it But the reason that I did that and the reason that I cut it is because the purpose of the Vire 88p is to be a portable air compressor. So this is what it actually came with. It came with alligator clips. So again, I wanted to be able to permanently mount it and essentially have onboard air, which is why I chose to mount it that way and then plug that or make that universal plug back there. But I didn't want to lose the functionality of the stock alligator clips. So I rewired those to one of these universal plugs. And then because they're universal and reversible, I don't know if you can see this, I can actually take these and plug these into each other. So I can basically retain the stock functionality that I had, or I can plug it into the truck, which is kind of handy. So that's kind of my setup for air. Um, you know, it's a it's an inexpensive air compressor. It's maybe 50, 60 bucks. Um, so honestly, you know, it, it airs up my 33s in maybe about two and a half, three minutes each. So it's not the fastest thing, but it's definitely sufficient, um, especially in a pinch, especially if you're just airing down to like 15, 18 pounds of pressure get back up to 35 it's it's pretty quick a couple minutes a tire um the thing that i really like about it not to get too off course is the fitting on the end here is just a screw on type so you just screw it onto your tire hit on the little on switch here when it's plugged in and uh it'll just air that right up and it'll just go and it has a pressure gauge on it so that you can see what that tire is at and then you can just shut it off when you hit you know your desired tire pressure so it's pretty handy but so now that you've seen the inside of the truck empty also, I've got all that stuff mounted up on the back of it. First aid kit, Fisker's axe, uh, the Fisker's shovel, more knife for cooking, stuff like that. Um, now that you've seen all that, I'm going to show you how I load the truck. All right, guys. So now that I've shown you kind of the available space inside of the truck, um, what I'm going to show you now is kind of how I'm going to pack it up for this trip. So again, this trip, I'm going about eight hours away from Indiana to West Virginia. Um, I am planning to cook a decent amount of food. So if you've listened to a lot of the podcasts, you've heard kind of the, you could just do hot dogs and pop tarts um, all the way up to, you know, a gourmet kitchen and a fridge freezer and all that stuff. Um, my approach this time is kind of a middle ground of that. So I'm going to bring my Coleman two burner stove. Um, I've got some, you know, fancy sort of jalapeno pepper jack hamburgers that I'm going to cook one night. I've got some steak that I'm going to cook another night. Um, I've got some breakfast stuff like hash browns and sausage patties and eggs that I'm going to cook for breakfast. Um, so I'm kind of going to do a little more than normal, but still I can pretty much do everything with my small cook set and my Coleman double burner. Um, so again, this section here now I'm going to show you how I actually pack all this stuff into the truck. So I apologize in advance. I shot it outside. The audio is a little quieter. I'll boost it a little bit so that it's not so hard to hear, but that should give you a good idea of just kind of how I pack up for the trip. So I hope that helps. So, like I mentioned before, I can actually get all three of these Plano crates across the back perfectly, which I'm going to show you now. Even with a little bit of room to spare, a couple inches down in there. And of course, you get your small round sort of stuff, like toilet, sleeping bag. Um, just keep extra plastic bags down in there just to have. And these 
are my mats for cots to make it super comfortable. And of course, this is the actual cot here. Chair. Table. Tent. And small bathroom tent. The nice thing about this though is once I get this all set up like this, so this has everything in it except now my cooler and my five gallon water jug. Um, so the nice thing is I still got tons of room in front of the front seat up here. And then I've still got my camera bag too, which so that and my normal backpack will get thrown in the front seat. So for one person trip, the exterior is perfect. I mean, I've got tons of room and I can keep it low enough that I can still see out the back window, which is really my goal because it just gets a lot harder when everything's packed up. It's hard to see out the side, especially when you're on a, you know, six, seven, eight, ten hour trip from one state to, you know, a few states away. It can be kind of a pain in the butt if you can't see out. So, um, again, everything's loaded up. Um, under the floor here, there is some storage I didn't show you, but I've got some jumper cables down there, some reflective mats, the kind that are for the front window. But the purpose of that is in the winter, if it's freezing cold, I can pop those out, lay them on the floor of the truck if I wanted to sleep in the truck, help reflect some of that heat back up. Um, and the cold air from the bottom of the truck down. Um, so I've got those in there. I've um, always got my bungee cords up here with some big hooks on them. So just in case if I need to strap some stuff down back here, I can. Before I leave for the trip, I may actually put a couple of these bungee cords over top of this just to keep everything still, make sure nothing's moving around. But really, it shouldn't move that much now. All right, guys. So thanks again for listening to the episode. Um, from this episode, again, our main focuses were to cover how to pack the stuff, what kind of capability the Xterra has to hold the stuff, and then how I fill the Xterra most efficiently, in my opinion, um, for a one-person, four-day trip. So now that we've covered all those things, um, I hope that that was helpful information for you, particularly if you're an Xterra person, but it's general enough that really anybody could get value out of it. Um, so again, I hope that that sort of gives you another you know, person's view into how to pack for something like overlanding. Um, I'm also planning to, and this will probably be on a, a pretty near in the future episode, I'm going to kind of go through my planning list and, and what I use. I use Google Docs and I'll kind of show you that in more detail, screen share with you, and uh, and then put a link to that document in that future video. So look for that. Um, but again, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. Please comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you use any of the same stuff. Let me know if you have better you know ways to pack up a truck. Let me know if You've got other gear that you've used that works better. Um, also, please feel free to comment and, and let me know like, hey, here's something I'd like to see you talk about. Here's a, a, a topic that I'd like to see you cover in the next podcast or vlog. Um, I'd love to get that feedback from you. And lastly, if you like the content and you want to see more, I release a couple pieces of content per week. Um, one podcast, so if you're listening on the podcast, thank you, and you'll get one of those per week. If you want to, though, head over to YouTube, search for All Things Overlanding. Um, I release at least one gear review and a podcast slash vlog every week. Um, and then when I get time, I do additional gear reviews and things like that. So tons of content coming on uh, on YouTube. And I'll also put links below to Facebook and Instagram. I post pretty frequently on there as well. So again, if you're enjoying the content, please feel free to subscribe on whichever channels you like. Um, comment and let me know what you think. And uh, lastly, just thanks for watching. So as I always say, live, learn, discover, get out there. Um, thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you soon.